So get your sand bucket, your beach umbrella, bikini, your sunscreen. Let's get to the beach. It's time to talk about why you have that sand or those dunes in some beaches. Why do other beaches do not have any dunes and are more pebble-like? Why are some beaches more full of shells? Where did all that sand come from in the first place? How do you make a beach? And that's what this video is all about. Now, so let's talk about the ideas, first of all, of dunes. Dunes are these bunches of sand gathered away from the actual wet area of the beach, so that's actually behind the beach. And some people think, oh, that's an area that used to be a beach and it was underwater. Actually, it's not true. Uh, in fact, the reason why there's sands there is because there is no water hitting it, and otherwise they would be eroded away. And so the beach area is only the front part. That dune came from another process we're going to talk about in a second. Now, what also, why... What is a berm? A berm is also an important concept. Now, berm is that front area. You see here, you see an example of a berm. That line that actually is lower than the actual beach sand area. So you're going to have, um, you see the same line over here. That's another berm right there. And so basically, that is the wave area where sand is constantly being deposited into the beach. So you get this, this higher accretion of sand right next to the front area. So a lot of beaches, you've noticed this, that as you approach the shoreline, you have a sudden drop and then you have the actual wet part of the beach. That sudden drop is what we consider the berm or the area of wave erosion and deposition of the shoreline. And so that's what a berm is. And we're going to be important as we talked about this topic. Now, what actually creates the beach is, is what we have to talk about. Now, before we do that, Let's talk about the profile of a beach. Now, typically, a beach actually has new sand sitting on top of old sand sitting on top of bad rock. So bad rock is the actual continent or the area that hasn't actually gotten eroded. And on top of that, you have sand that's been there for thousands of years, very old sand from deposition uh, and erosion of the continent thousands of years ago. And then you have the newest sand, which is a, uh, more recent, sitting on top of that. Now, the old sand will extend into miles into the ocean and the new sand will typically be closer to the actual sh uh, shoreline. Now, most dunes are made of new sand or Holocene sand, and then most of the wet area of the beach is all usually also made of that. Now, so the dunes are the, remember, the part, pieces of sand that's behind the actual beach, get, which is taken there by a wind. The, then you have the foreshore, which is the actual area of the wet beach plus the dry beach, or the area that's actually considered the beach line. All right, or the area that's being formed by the position of an erosion of waves being formed and destroyed by those processes. Then you have the shore face. The shore face includes the first few um, miles of, of ocean, uh, which includes a lot, of, a lot of people consider that part of the beach as well. Beyond the shore face, you have the continental shelf, which includes the inner shelf, the mid shelf, and the far shelf. All right? And all of that will be covered with sand. Sand is being deposited by rivers and by the erosion of the beach uh, into the, those areas. So as the, the waves cut through the continents and as rivers cut through the continents, both deposit material to form this sand and, or this sediment. It's not just sand. It can be clay. It can be silt. It can be sand. It can be pebbles. It depends on what the continent is made of. But all of these materials are going to be distributed throughout the actual continental shelf, which includes the dune area, the foreshore, which is your actual beach, the shore face, which is the first piece underwater, and that piece where people swim on, and it will extend for kilometers into the actual water, and where the boating, most of the boating takes place, things like that, most of the, of the diving and snorkeling, and things like that, what we do is going to be happening in the shore face. And then you have the deeper waters, when you're already getting to uh, 30 meters deep, and you're still covered with sand. We're talking about the inner shelf and the mid shelf. Now, by the time you get to the inner shelf, the waters are already deep and you barely have any of that new sand. The majority of the sand that's gotten there is sand that has been dragged there thousands of years ago by wave, by wave and undertow action. Okay? So this is a typical beach profile. And you can see here both the depthness and the, the, what happens uh, horizontally with the sand. Also, notice that the dunes can extend uh, over... 30, 40 meters higher than the actual shore face. So dunes can sometimes go way above sea level, all right? And in fact, the, the largest mountain in Florida, in the South Florida, sorry, is actually a large dune that uh, formed because of this process we're going to be describing right now. All right? So that 
is our structure. By the way, sometimes you get these formations of hummocks or mounds, and these are things that form because of underwater currents, or and then basically accretion of sand in a specific area at the bottom of the mid shelf. So that sometimes you have these sand mounds or sand hummocks. Hummocks are the, like, steep ones, and mounds are just basically uh, little um, piles of sand that gather in a specific location of the shelf. And remember that below all that sand, you still have the bedrock. Okay, so this is a typical profile of a beach area, and notice that. You're not going to get to old sand until you get all the way into the two kilometers deep into the inner shelf. And you're already talking about 30, 40 meters below the sea level. And what most people think of beach is definitely the foreshore and the shore face. That's what most people uh, think of it as beach. And some people think of dunes as well, but that's that technically not part of what we think as the beach. So let's talk about uh, a profile of a healthy beach. So you're going to have a long back shore. Which includes that those dunes and uh, and uh, including the fore dune and the rear dune, and sometimes you have many dunes, two, three types of dune sets of dunes near the beach. And remember, these dunes are formed by wind, which carries the sand from the beach backwards. So we'll talk about how that works later. Then you have the foreshore, which in the previous drawing was very, very, very tiny, and includes just a piece of sand that's at sitting at the beach that is not never hit by water, but it's but it's beyond the berm. Remember, the berm is that first drop of, of, the, of the actual shoreline or the air that's getting both deposited and eroded by wave motion. And then beyond the berm, you have the wet beach, which is the air, which is the air that actually receives water back and forth. And sometimes above water, sometimes below, but depending on the tide. Then uh, the area below the tide, which, in other words, the area that's always underwater, is considered the near shore. All right? And we, we saw that in our previous profile that the near shore actually includes um, the shore the shore face okay and pieces of the inner shelf as well okay and then beyond the near shore you also get the offshore which goes beyond that uh, into the, so then the near shore includes the the inner the inner shelf and the mid shelf but then beyond the, the inner shelf you're gonna have the offshore uh, which it goes down gradually and gradually until you get to the area that was never, ever below sea level, never touched by wave motion, and it's going to get to the continental drop-off, which is called the continental slope. And that's basically the, the, the area of how most shorelines, which have gotten to the advanced stage where you actually have a beach, look like. Remember, you can also have the cliffs when you're still being eroded or a marine erosion shoreline formation. But after you have a beach, it will look like this, uh, uh, the profile of the beach. Now... That will form through wind and wave erosion. So let me talk about wind erosion of the shoreline, first of all. When wind erodes stuff, it erodes differently depending on the material. Things like clay and silt, which is very fine materials, actually get picked up and suspended into the air and taken to for miles in what we call dust storms. And so that means that these materials are carried further and most of the dunes are going to be made of materials like that. Then you have, and even beyond that, because the clay will be deposited into the continents because of that. So the same clay that came from with the rivers sometimes gets, gets thrown back into the continents by, by, by winds. Well, we're talking about sand, though. Sand is a little more heavy than clay and silt is, so it, ha it doesn't really get suspended in the air much. It just jumps around from one place to the other. And if you've ever been to the beach when a very windy day, you notice that the sand is doing this. It's jumping out of the but then landing right back into the sand again. And think for, th for coarse sand or things like pebbles, the best you're going to do is you're actually going to roll that pebble with the wind, and you're not going to be able to, to move it too much, or you have less of a saltation. It looks more like rolling. And if you ever have a hard, a hard, hard pebble, you never, that's barely even going to move because of the wind. And that's why pebble beaches are very hard to erode because both water and wind have a trouble moving those pebbles. And so whenever you have a river, river full of pebbles depositing those things into the shoreline, that is actually going to cause a beach that's going to be very, very steep because of this. We're going to talk about that in the end of our, our beach formation video. All right? Now... Uh, how does actually how do you actually build a, a beach? And that, we're going to conclude this video with that, all right? The idea of how do you actually build a beach. Well, you build a beach by a combination of wave, waves and winds. So waves, uh, well, so let's say rivers or waves are causing erosion of the continents, right? The waves are going to be eroding the continents, 
from the ocean, we, we talked about in the last video, marine erosion shoreline formation, and then you have also rivers which are depositing material uh, that they got from cutting through the continents for miles and miles and miles from the river head all the way to the delta of the river. And so these materials which were carried both by the rivers and by wave erosion, all this sand is carried by wave currents, the breaker current, uh, into the shoreline. And so the waves are what's actually bringing the sand into the beach and just basically throwing that sand in the beach. But how come the wave doesn't pick them back? Well, it does. But remember, since the top of the wave actually moves um, more or faster than the back of the wave does, uh, it doesn't move more. All the water that hits the beach ends up coming back one way or the other, either through a rip current or sideways through a long shore current or under with the undertow. But since the top moves more, particles suspended in the water, in the top of the water, will be thrown more than actually being picked back. And so that, the overall effect of this is deposition of sand into the shoreline and the formation of that berm or that pile of sand near the beach. Okay? Now, there will be some undertow or some wave cutting continuing through this process. And that means that some, a little bit of the sand that's, that's being dragged it will actually be eroded by the same waves that throw them there accidentally. Some of the sand gets caught on the undertow and taken deeper into deep and deeper into the oceans. But then the waves will continue to pick up from this undertow as they hit the bottom of the water and be taking them up. So it's going to take a long, very, very long time for deep currents to actually drag sand into the uh, deeper four, four, four beaches and, and then into the inner shelf, mid shelf. Out and out of shelf and so it will take a very long time for sand f that that is actually being deposited in the foreshore to end up in the near shore in the offshore and then beyond all right but remember also that some of the sand that's in the offshore and the offshore is there because rivers threw them there and deposit the material there and remember that when this gets out of hand and a lot of sand is deposited on the bank some of that can destabilize and collapse and cause turbidity currents, which then deposit a lot of that sand into the bottom of the oceans. Uh, which is also why you have things like muds in the bottom of the oceans, because usually what goes further away is particles like clay and silt, and that's why you're going to end up getting those light particles in the bottom of the ocean, forming the red mud and things we talked about in the previous chapters. All right. Now, this is the process of formation of the beach, but once the sand is sitting at the beach, Wind will then pick up this sand and throw it backwards to form the dry beach or the area that's never really touched by the waves. And then you're going to have the fore dune and the back dune and maybe even dunes after that, all depending on how much wind you have in the place. And so you're going to have wind completing the process of formation of the back shore and through, through the picking up of the sand that's being deposited by the waves. And this is a process that will take months or weeks to, uh, weeks or months to build, while, while, while waves will take anything between hours or days or weeks to actually build, uh, the back shore takes months to actually build in a, a process. Now, on the next video, we're going to talk about how this can actually be reversed to cause the erosion of the beach line, all right? And then we'll conclude our beach cycle videos. I'll see you then.